back to the Gourmet Gambit. Today's episode is all about home brewing and especially mead. Home brewing has become very popular, making your own beer, making your own wine. Mead is one of the oldest alcoholic drinks in history. Some historians say it goes back about 9,000 years. The Greek used to call it hydromel, hydro for water and mel for honey. Making meat is not as difficult as brewing your own beer, but you still need to be precise. You need some more ingredients than only water, honey and yeast. And today I'm going to explain some tools and materials you really need and show them how they function and why we need them. The first thing we're going to talk about is the fermentation buckets. You can also use uh, carboys or Debbie Jones for the fermentation. The two of them have a confidence of uh, 30 liters. We're going to use metrics and liters uh, so we don't have any problems in between uh, British uh, measurements or US measurements. So the buckets they have a tap. Uh, here you can see a scale for how many liters of uh, liquid you got in your bucket. This is a scale of temperature so you know exactly on what temperature your wort is fermenting. On the top you got a little hole with the rubber and this is to put a airlock in there so the gases of the fermentation are going to come out but no air is going to come in. And this is simply so we don't have any oxygen from the outside that goes in our fermentation bucket which can contaminate the wort with bacteria and wild yeast. And this is the airlock we're going to put in the top of the bucket. We also need products to clean all our material and especially to sanitize the material. Sanitizing is killing all the bacteria and the wild yeast that can be in the air. They sell classic products which uh, you have to rinse afterwards. The best option for me is to take a no rinse sanitizer, sanitizes all your material in a few minutes time so it's very quick and you don't have to rinse it. Very handy for the cleaning is a spray bucket and the brush of course especially when you're using Demi Jones or Cowboys which are a bit tight on the top. Very important thing for us is the hydrometer. This is a hydrometer that has three scales. It's got a density scale, it's got a potential alcohol scale, what the potential outcome can be on degree of alcohol. And you also got a scale for the amount of sugar. It's going to tell you how much honey you need to get a certain degree of alcohol. A brewing spoon to stir your wort. You also going to need a little tube and this is very handy to use if you need to make measurements. We also got pH test strips. These are important to see if you need more acid in your uh, honey and water mixture because honey does not have a natural acidity like grapes and uh, fruit. They got a scale from 1 to 12. A very good option is the auto siphon. It's very handy to rack from one to another fermentation bucket and it's also very handy when you're gonna bottle your mead, wine or beer. You got a tube on this. Now if you got some bends in your tube just run your hot water tap and leave it a few seconds under your hot water tap and it gets back to its original shape. Also if you want to put on your little hose on the tube under the hot water tap for a few seconds and it goes on very easy. You also got a anti-sediment tip on there so when you start wrecking from one bucket to another all the dead sediments are going to stay on the bottom of your bucket. When you go bottling after your secondary fermentation you probably won't have uh, sediments so you can take off the tip and wreck the bucket from the bottom. This also goes with a bottle filler. The bottle filler has a little tip here 
which is a valve with a spring and this gives you a good control of the exact level you want to fill in your bottle. And when it comes to bottling, you need a corking machine and the corks, of course. We're going to have a look here at some other products we also need. Of course we got our yeast. You can choose a wine yeast, white wine yeast uh, for sweet wines like uh, Chablis or Sauterne. But the problem is this yeast uh, is not very resistant to higher alcohol degrees. You can also use the yeast for champagne. It's got a little bit more resistant. But the best thing uh, to do is to get a special yeast for mead. They support more variations in temperature and they're very resistant on alcohol degree. What we also need is Camden sulfide. This is potassium metabisulfide. And we're going to use this to kill all the bacteria and the wild yeast in our mixture. Honey has a very low level of acid. We need to put some more acid in there uh, so your pH is going to uh, go down to 3. You can use tartaric uh, acid or citric acid. This is a mixture of both. It's a good compromise because it's, it's got the quality of citric and tartaric acid which I prefer to use. Your yeast also needs nutrients uh, because it's not going to work for you without uh, getting fed, you know. You got special nutrients for the yeast as well. These are medium toast uh, oak chips and we're going to put uh, these in our wort as well. So that's going to give us uh, a little bit of the idea that we have aged our mead in wooden barrels. It's quite surprisingly, it works quite good. Then it comes of course to water. Water is very important. I wouldn't use water from the tap because you don't know what chemicals they put in there. I always use water from a good source, but one that has not too much minerals. And of course our honey. You don't have to uh, buy a very expensive honey. What you need is a real honey. So you need a raw honey, one that's not pasteurized. Take a honey that's not too strong, liquid if possible of course. So now we're a little bit more familiar of all the materials, products and ingredients we need. So now we're ready to start brewing our mead. See you back in our next episode.